Yeah, I'm Thomas Seafried, professor of biology here at Boston College, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. And our research projects of recent, last 30 years perhaps, has been focusing on the genetics and biochemistry uh, of cancer. Um, but I, but cancer, we have a, a terrible problem in cancer right now is, is that it's an increase, a disease that's constantly increasing uh, in both incidence and number of people dying. And the most uh, recent studies coming from the American Cancer Society ha have shown clearly that we have over 600,000 people a year dying from cancer in this country, uh, which comes to about 1,700 people a day. Uh, and if you break it down, it's about 70 people per hour. Uh, and the situation is becoming uh, increasingly worse. We're having younger and younger people getting, getting cancer, uh, all different types of, uh, of these cancers. And, and um, you know, we've been studying this, but not in a way to actually impact, uh, for many years, to impact the, the numbers of, of people surviving or being managed. We, we started that um, more recently when it became clear to me uh, that cancer is a mitochondrial metabolic disease. Uh, you have to um, understand that having been uh, having a PhD in genetics and biochemistry, understanding mammalian genetics, I, I was I was led to believe always that cancer was a genetic disease. It was a silent assumption. The field, the NIH, National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, uh, all say cancer is a genetic disease. Of course, I had no reason to question that uh, until I started doing my own research and clearly seeing that um, something was really not right with this because we were, we were collecting data on calorie restriction, fasting, and this kind of thing, showing that the lowering of glucose and the elevation of ketone bodies uh, was strongly linked to the success of managing cancer. And that brought us to the work of uh, the scientist Otto Warburg from Germany in the, 19, uh, in the 20th century leading scientist. And we be, I began to see through our research here at Boston College that most of our work was supporting Otto Warburg's theory and not, and not the somatic mutation theory, which is the, is the general theory that most people think cancer is. And that's what it says on the National Cancer Institute website, it says cancer is a genetic disease. So as any scientist, you say, well, how can, how can that organization be incorrect? But the more, le more research that we did and the more observations that we made in preclinical models of brain cancer and metastatic cancer, the more and more we became convinced that cancer was a mitochondrial metabolic disease. So I started taking a much deeper look into the evidence supporting the somatic mutation theory. Why, how is it possible that so many leading scientists and medical institutions throughout the world are of this constant belief uh, with very little questioning of it. Um, Sonin Shinasato at Tufts University had questioned this, and I, I thought they did an excellent job. But um, I, I started to look more into it myself. And it became more and more clear that um, mitochondrial energy metabolism uh, is at the core of, of the problem with cancer. So we realize now that cancer starts from a two-step process, chronic damage to the ability of cells to produce energy through oxidative phosphorylation, which is our ability to breathe oxygen and, and uh, produce CO2 from breathing. And that's step one. There's a chronic disruption of oxidative phosphorylation, followed by step two is the protracted increase in fermentation, which is energy without oxygen. So then when we look at the mitochondria under the electron microscope, as has been done by many, many scientists, we see abnormalities in the number, structure, and function of mitochondria. So this then seems to link all cancers together. They are, uh, have defective energy metabolism. We haven't found any cancer that can live without a fermentation. Now, Otto Warburg said they were fermenting uh, lactic acid, which is the product of a glucose metabolism. Uh, we made a discovery here with my colleague Christos Chernopoulos from Semmelweis University in Budapest, Hungary, that cancer cells also ferment the amino acid glutamine. So what we have found, we've actually filled in a lot of the misunderstandings that were associated with Otto Warburg's original findings and show now that Warburg was essentially correct. Cancer cells uh, arise from chronic damage to oxidative phosphorylation, coupled with a compensatory fermentation of two fuels, the the fuel glucose and the amino acid glutamine, both of which can be fermented. So then that became clear 
to us, uh, and we see all cancers have that same common pathophysiological problem, which can occur from any number of uh, influences in the environment. You can get intermittent hypoxia, carcinogens, oncogenic viruses, in intermittent, uh, 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 intermittent ox oxygen inflammation. All of these kinds of things impact negatively on the mitochondria. Mitochondria then uh, gradually turn on fermentation. And it became very clear. We could connect all the dots. dots. Cancer is absolutely a mitochondrial metabolic disease. But then when you go back and you look and say, how is it possible that so many people can continue to think it's a genetic disease? So let's look at the evidence. They never discuss the tumors that have no mutations. So uh, we look at and says, how, how is it possible? Yes, most of them do have mutations, um, but some don't. So that's like, wow, that's one serious um, problem uh, with the somatic mutation theory. So people said, well, not all mutations cause cancer, uh, but then only certain ones like driver genes. The work out of Johns Hopkins said, oh no, driver genes are the ones that cause, mutations in driver genes cause cancer. Now, new, new experiments are showing that all the normal tissues in our body are loaded with these driver genes that don't form cancer, another major problem. And then finally, the nuclear transfer experiments that were done by Israel and Schaefer and a variety of others in vivo and in vitro experiments clearly show when you take the tumor nucleus the nucleus of a tumor cell and put it in, a, in a, the cytoplasm of a normal cell, you get suppressed uh, tumor genesis, dysregulated cell growth. On the other hand, if you take the, normal, the nucleus from a normal cell and put it into a tumor cytoplasm, you get dysregulated growth. All, of, all together, no mutations in some cancers, driver gene mutations in normal tissues, nuclear transfer experiments, clearly indicate that cancer cannot be a genetic disease. And the reason why people think it is is confirmation biased or hopeless ideology. And that seems to be locked into the entire system here. Confirmation bias and hopeless ideology maintains the idea that cancer is a genetic disease. And as the result of that, we have 1,700 people a, die, a day dying from a misunderstanding of what the nature of the disease is. We're now seeing that we're getting tremendous uh, success uh, in managing cancer using metabolic approaches. As I said, cancer cannot survive. Cancer tumor cells cannot survive without the sugar glucose or, 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 or the amino acid glutamine, which are the fermentation fuels, nor can they use fatty acids or ketone bodies uh, as an alternative. So the solution, I should say a solution to managing cancer is to significantly lower the two fermentable fuels while elevating the body to an alternative fuel fuels the, the, the fatty acids and ketone bodies, which the tumor cells can't use. Thereby, we marginalize the cancer cells. Their survivability is significantly compromised. I have to be honest with you. To target glutamine is a little bit more difficult than reducing glucose. You can reduce glucose by, by water-only fasting and diets that lower the glucose ketone index, which we developed here at Boston College. Uh, it's an index of the ratio of glucose to glutamine. We can push that down. We have a calculator. The keto mojos and other meters can, can bring, let the patient bring their own uh, glucose uh, down and elevate their ketones. But to kill the, the glutamine pathway, you need drugs. And we're using para, uh, parasite drugs and a variety of other drugs that target uh, the glutamine. And we have to do that in a pulse way, uh, not a press way. And at one of our biggest papers for the transformation uh, of cancer treatment in clinics is the press pulse therapeutic strategy, which we published here at Boston College with my colleagues, Dominic D'Agostino, uh, the late George Yu, and um, Dr. Um, Joseph Maroon from the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, we put this together. Uh, it's called press pulse. We press glucose down and we pulse the glutamine while the body is in a state of nutritional ketosis. That will be the strategy for managing the majority of cancers uh, when done correctly. The problem is the medical schools have not yet come to understand this. Uh, unfortunately, many oncologists and physicians have never been, never been uh, trained to know that cancer is a metabolic disease. So they're all, so we have to have train, the training of the, of the physicians must, ha must happen. And uh, we have to find a way to generate revenue uh, using metabolic therapy uh, in order to replace the revenue generation that's being done currently with these toxic poisons and radiations and these other things that we're treating 
uh, people with. So it's going to be a slow transition. It's a paradigm shift of the greatest uh, proportion because it ultimately will be able to manage cancer and take the stigma of fear uh, uh, and, and mystery out of this out of this uh, disease, which is not nearly as complicated as has been made out to be. The tumor cells cannot survive without fermentation. The two fermentable fuels are glucose and glutamine. The tumor cells cannot adapt to fatty acids or ketone bodies in the absence of these two fuels. So once, once people come to know this, they, the strategies for managing cancer will be so much more effective, so much less toxic, and allow people to live far longer than is currently possible.